Hello everyone, it's Russell from Ink and Paper Blog. Thanks for turning in to my first video. I really appreciate it. Um, kind of to introduce myself, um, I describe myself as half book fanatic, half tattoo fanatic, as you will uh, later see, I'm sure, and full-time dog dad. I have three dogs that seem to dominate my life. You will likely meet them because they don't like to stay away for very long, um, so they'll probably be jumping on my lap sometime in the near future. So if they do, I apologize in advance. I thought I would focus the first video um, on what I read in February, and then I realized I only read five books in February, so I was a little embarrassed. Um, so I watched a bunch of uh, videos from you guys out there in booktube land, and it seems like February was a rough reading month for a lot of people, maybe not as rough as it was for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through those and give you an idea of kind of what I read and how I read it. Um, I hope you like it, and I'll start with this one. This book is called A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. This was the first book I read this month. The reason I had to read it was because it was my virtual book club. We meet um, once a quarter via Google Hangouts. I met them all through Booktopia, which was an event through um, Books in the Nightstand, which was an amazing podcast that's no longer on the air. Um, the reason the book was chosen was because a lot of them had read Mr. Toll's first book, Rules of Civility, and raved about it. Um, they all really liked this book, and they would highly recommend it, so the review I'm about to give is probably a one-off for them, um, but for me, it just didn't work. So it's really the story of a count who is sentenced at the beginning of the book to live the rest of his life in a hotel. He um, has been living in this hotel, so it's really not that big of a change other than when he goes back, they won't live him in his, let him live in his normal space. He has to go and live basically in the attic. Um, then we wait for people to show up to influence his life, um, to change who he is as a person. But that was my problem. I didn't really feel like throughout the book that he changed all that much. He was pretty much the same guy throughout. Um, the periphery characters were actually very interesting, um, but not really delved into enough for me. And by the end of the book, I just was kind of ready for it to be over. It's very readable. Um, I wouldn't say that it was a hard book to read, but it's not one of those books when I was reading it that I was excited to go back to it. So it's a solid three stars. Um, I would give it to people if they're not much of a reader, um, but I wouldn't actually go out of my way to recommend it to a bunch of people. So I started off with that book for the month and it got a lot better. So that was A uh, Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. The next book that I wound up reading was actually the second book in a series, and it is, hopefully that light, this book has a glossy cover, um, is Angel Catbird by Margaret Atwood. It's her um, graphic novel series that she's doing right now. This is the second volume, as I said. The first volume came out at the end of last year, and I've read them both now. Um, Margaret Atwood says in the first one that this has kind of always been a pet project of hers. Since she was a little kid, she's wanted to write and uh, a comic book and have one published, so finally she gets to do that. The uh, main character in this is Stridge. He is a scientist at the beginning of book one who's working on some sort of formula to help with mutation. It turns out he lives in a world where there are rat people, cat people, bird people, as a lot of people, I know, but they all coexist. Um, and his boss is a rat person who basically wants to take over the world, and he's looking for a formula to make more rat people. Um, a mishap happens, and our main character winds up being mixed with a bird and a cat and becoming Angel Catbird. And the story is him joining with the forces of the cat people to stop the, his old boss from taking over the world. Um, in book two, the entire group is actually walking um, to the castle of this gentleman here, who happens to be a cat vampire person. Um, it's fun. It's easy. This is not a book that's going to um, challenge you in any sort of way regarding theme or thematics, but the, the drawings are beautiful. The story is entertaining. It's a good cleansing your palate type book. Um, Margaret Atwood is one of my favorite authors. I um, know we've all read The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I think Alias Grace is my favorite book by her, but I've read a bunch. Um, what I really like about the book is that there are these little sort of um, PSA pieces at the bottom where they talk about how to adopt cats from shelters, how to neuter them, 
keep them safe, don't let them out of your house, what they do to the environment, what rats do, what birds do. It's um, very entertaining to be sort of educated on this as you go along. I really enjoy them, so I highly recommend them. That's Angel Cat Bird by Margaret Atwood. Um, the next book I read I actually heard of on Simon's channel over at Savage Reads, and I'll link him down below. He had mentioned the book in his Diversathon um, TBR uh video, and then he actually read it and talked about it in his uh, Diversivon What I Read video, and that is Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins. Um, I want to kind of read to you about Kathleen Collins because I didn't know who she was till I picked up this book. It says here in the back that she was a pioneering African-American playwright, filmmaker, civil rights activist, film editor, and educator. And her film, Losing Ground, is one of the first features made by a black woman in America and is an extremely rare narrative portrayal of a black female intellectual. Unfortunately, she died in 1988 at only the age of 46, I believe, and she, um, as far as I know, didn't publish anything other than this book that just came out, which is kind of sad because I'll tell you right now, this book is amazing. Um, it's a collection of short stories, and I'm normally not a short story guy, but she is very, very inventive. Her style is very unique. It's set mostly in the 60s around the civil rights movement, kind of shifting in that time period, but feels very timely now. I know a lot of the stuff we're going through, this speaks to it. Um, she talks about internal racism within the black community. She talks about integration. She talks about segregation. Um, her characters at times have no names. They're just really feelings and action, um, and sometimes she delves really deep into who they are as people. I could not recommend this book more. Um, it's not long. I think it's less than 150 pages, maybe about 150 pages. I didn't even mind. I read it actually on a Saturday and finished it on a Sunday morning. It um, She really can't write, and I'm really sad that there's not a whole lot out there to go and uh, pick up by her. But that is Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins, and um, thanks, Simon, for uh, getting this on my radar. I really appreciate it. The next book I've actually read and raved about and talked to the author on Twitter about um, on my blog, so if you want to read my review of it there, you're welcome to go there. I'll link it down below. But that is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. Um, I will tell you right now, I like books about old women. I like spinster books. I like books that are set in small little towns where not a whole lot happens. Um, Lillian Boxfish is 84 really 85, but she's been lying about her age, so we won't tell anyone, um, on the verge of the 1984-1985 um, New Year. And it turns out every year she walks from her house in New York City to a restaurant to have dinner. And in that walk, she meets a number of interesting characters, but she also reflects back on the life that she has that's made her the woman that she is. And what I really like about it, it's actually based on the true story of a real woman um, who started her career in the 30s and 40s in New York City. Um, Lillian Bockfish and Margaret Fishback, that's the real woman, are both copyright editors at um, R.H. Macy's. They become very famous. They're also poets. The poetry used for Lillian Bockfish throughout the book is actually the poetry of this real-life woman. Um, she becomes very famous and then she gets married and she has a baby and there's no protection for a woman to go out on maternity leave at the time. So she leaves her job, which she loves and she is fantastic at, to raise her son. Um, she goes through a bout of depression. The book is very frank about how she deals with that um, and sort of the changes it makes in her life. Lillian is a very strong woman. I want her to be my friend. I wish I could sit down and have a drink with her and um, get to know her even better. Um, she's great at introducing herself to people on her walk and us getting backstory really quick. Miss Rooney can tell you the story of a person in mere minutes, which I really, really appreciated. Um, there were only a couple things towards the end of the book. I kept saying this 84-year-old woman, 84 woman's walked a lot. Can she continue to walk? Um, which it maybe is a judgmental on my part. I don't think I could have walked as much as she did, but um, I apologize to Miss Boxfish. Um, but the other thing was there was a little bit of an issue. At the end of the book, she meets someone who has AIDS. It is the 80s in New York City. I felt that part was a little bit forced, but it didn't bother me at all or my enjoyment of the book. I would give this book to anyone who wants to read a book that's just enjoyable, well-written, 
and a character that you won't forget. That's Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. I loved it. Please read it. Um, and then the last book that I read last month um, is actually a book I'm going to tell you about, but in America it doesn't come out until June. So I got a copy from my friend Simon. He sent me a copy from England so that I could read it early. It was his favorite book of 2016. It was also the Waterstone Book of the Year, I believe. I'm not big on your uh, English uh, bookstores, but I think it's Waterstone. Um, and he bought me the Waterstone edition, which is, as you can see, absolutely gorgeous. This is the Exis, e Essex? Exis. Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Um, it is a historical fiction piece. It is it is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Um, it focuses the story on Cora. She is a woman who at the beginning of the book, her husband has died, I believe, of throat cancer. He has a growth on his throat. They do not have a great relationship. She's kind of been abused by him. So afterwards, she decides to do a complete change of her life. Um, she's very interested and she wants to discover something in the anthropological world, um, some sort of animal, something to make her famous. She's very, very um, passionate about it. And she goes out to Essex to kind of revamp herself and she takes her son and she takes her companion. Um, they get there, they have friends that come to visit. There's so many great side characters. I could tell you about them all, but I won't because I want you to meet them all in the book. But really the major character that she meets is um, a pastor who lives out there with his wife and children. They develop a very complicated relationship. They are very... They're those friends that challenge each other constantly. They love each other but hate each other. Um, the pastor's wife is very gets very sick in the book. Um, and they sort of rely on each other. Um, it's beautifully written. It's very Victorian. You learn a lot of details about the towns, about the city, um, about the people. But every time I delved into it, I did not want to leave. Um, I felt like I was there walking around um, these different parts of town with her. Um, the Essex Serpents itself, I should probably tell you about that part, um, is this mythological creature that is being blamed in this small, tiny town uh, for all of the bad stuff that's been happening. And um, it's kind of a creation in their head, but a lot of them think it's real. Um, is it real? Is it not real? Is there other things around? What is the explanation for the, what the people are seeing? Um, that is all in the background, and it's always it's really well done. The book is beautifully written, and um, there are whole sections that you'll probably take out and read to a ton of people. I really liked it. I think you would really like it. Um, and I highly recommend when it comes out in June, I'll try to remind you in June when it comes out that you want to read The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. It just got nominated for um, the Walter Scott long list for Best Historical Fiction. Um, it's my pick to win that prize, so let's hope it happens. Um, so again, please go out and read this book. So thank you very much for watching my first video. I would love to hear from you. I'll do a bunch of links in the bottom to my blog and my Instagram and my Twitter. Please follow me if you want to. I'll follow you. I want to hear or comments about any of these books if you've read them or any recommendations based upon what you saw I read. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.